give honor to God today and to also Larry and his lovely wife. I want to say a big thank you for standing this invitation to me to come be with you. Two Wednesdays ago, we had a powerful time here. And the Lord blessed. The Lord blessed us tremendously. And I believe that the Lord is going to bless us more, even more today. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for your prayers, your support. Thank God for all the ministers, the, the kings, the elders, all the way that in any way you've been a blessing, both to your local ministry here and also to your brothers in the motherland. I want to say thank you so much. I was asking God to give me a message, which I always do each time. I have the opportunity and the privilege to minister anywhere. I ask God to give me a message. And uh, the Lord told me to speak on divine intervention. Divine intervention. I want us to turn quickly to the book of Second Book of Kings. I'm going to deal with two uh, examples of the divine intervention incidents in the Bible. I'll take one from the Old Testament and the other from the New Testament. So I want you to give me your undivided attention and possibly I want you to take notes. I want you to take notes. Today I want you to write down things because the things you write down, you can go back to them even after some years and preach and even be blessed by those things. Second book of Kings, chapter 4. And they cried a certain woman, starting from verse 1. Now they cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear God, fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid had not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee, and upon thy sons, and thou and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from Elisha and shut the door upon her, and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. 
And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her sons, Bring me yet a vessel. Keep bringing, keep bringing. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. Huh? Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay thy debts and leave thou and thy children of the rest. Hmm. Divine intervention. I want us to read the other divine intervention incident from the book of Acts. If you will stand up for the reading, I will appreciate that. The book of Acts of the Apostles. Acts chapter 12. Hmm. Start reading from verse 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with chain with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison and behold the angel of the Lord came unto him and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell off from his hands. The angel of the Lord said unto him, Guard thyself and bound on thy sandals. And so he did. And they said unto him, Cast thy garment upon thee and follow me. And he went and followed him. And twist not, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel but thought he saw a vision he was always used to seeing vision so he thought this was one and they went out and followed him and we know that it was true which was done by the angel but thought he saw a vision hmm. and when they were past the first and the second word they came onto the iron gate which leaded unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. They went out and passed on through one street and forth. Wait, the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, <laughs> he said, Now I know of a shorty that the Lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectations of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose son name was Mark. Yeah, many were gathered together praying and praying and praying and praying. They were interceding. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to a king named Rhoda. When she saw Peter's, when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they, and they said unto her, the, those people that have been praying, those people that have been interceding, interceding, said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so it was Peter knocking at the door. And they said, It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking and knocking and when they had they were tired of the knocking. He kept knocking, knocking. This is not an angelic knock. This is a human being knocking. And a human being that has experienced divine intervention. But Peter con 
continued knocking. And when they had opened the door, they saw him. And they were astonished. And he beckoned unto them with his hands to hold their peace. Declaring unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, go show I say, show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts in Jesus name. Let the church say amen. amen. You may be seated. This is very interesting. You see, I decided to take two incidents. There are so many incidents in the Bible that uh, depict and portrays uh, divine intervention. But because it's going to be like a teaching preaching this morning because I want to take it a little bit slow so that you can you can take notes divine intervention now divine intervention occurs when the people uh, live a life of prayers you know prayer is very important in our lives today if we want to see God moving in our situation you know, divine intervention or divine intervention is something that occurs when God moves through uh, in your situation and uh, turning an impossible a natural condition or situation around and uh, supernaturally, you know, intervening in a certain situation. Now, divine intervention occurs when there is a divine encounter. Because a divine encounter with God produces divine intervention. Now, when God looks at your condition and decides to supernaturally intervene, uh, I'm talking about something that is out of the natural, that God intervenes and walks through for you. I'm talking about something that the ordinary man cannot solve. A problem that an ordinary man cannot change. Uh, yes, that is divine intervention. When God supernaturally steps into a situation and changes it. Uh, when God steps into a situation that is beyond your control and he effects the changes. Now, divine intervention can occur uh, when the saints believe God and pray unto God. Now we have two types of prayers that I would like to talk about a little bit maybe just scratch the surface. We have the intercessory prayers and we have the prayer of supplication. I write that down. Now the intercessory prayers is that which you embark on upon for somebody on behalf of, of on, on behalf of somebody you intercede for somebody you pray you groan you ask god intercessory prayers is done on behalf of another but the prayer of supplication is the type that you do for yourself are you listening to me? Uh, when, you, when you present your, your, your needs before God, he says, let your supplication be made unto God, be presented unto God. So a prayer of supplication is the one that, you, that, that, that entreats. Uh, it, it is very great. It is great. It forms uh, an atmosphere of communication between you and your father really, regarding issues about your personal life. You know, a lot of people intercede for others, but they do not really intercede. They do not communicate to God for, them, for, for, them, for themselves regarding needs that they have. You see, when you have the privilege to communicate with God concerning your personal need, you are in supplication. And that's a prayer of supplication. Now, there are many instances in the Bible that portrays uh, a prayer of supplication and also intercession, but we don't have time to go into those today because of time. So here you see in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, there was a lady. 
This lady was a wife to one of the sons of the prophets. I want you to follow me at this point. <laughs> you see, Elisha had many sons of the prophet that he was mentoring. Are you with me? Uh, Elisha had, they, they called them sons of the prophets. And this particular sons of the prophet was a loyal servant. Was faithful, was loyal. And uh, he was married to this lady that... Uh, in question right here. Now the scripture says, and there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah, on Elisha saying, thy servant, my husband is dead. Now you will notice that the woman recognized the husband to be a faithful servant of Elisha. So now this young man passed away. And it turned out that uh, the, the, the young man incurred a lot of debts before he passed away. So now this woman was confused. She had a situation in her life that needed a supernatural intervention. Now, I want you to write this down. Uh, number, one, number one, she was married to one of the sons of the prophet. Make sure you have that down. Number two... She and her husband were faithful and committed people in the ministry of Elisha. <laughs> uh, both of them were faithful. Both of them were loyal. And the husband was submissive, was always uh, uh, of inspiration and help to the ministry of Elisha. The husband was faithful, was always there was always uh, following, was always uh, uh, loyal, was always supportive. The husband was a faithful servant. Uh, look at what the wife said here. He says, thy servant, my husband. Uh, she recognized the husband to be one of the faithful leaders that operates in the ministry of servanthood uh, to the blessing and support of the prophet named Elisha. Uh, number three, the lady was uh, not only loyal, but the lady was somebody that believed in the ministry of Elisha. And now she believed in the ministry of Elisha. She, she believed to the point that she had to come to the prophet to lady complain. Are you listening to me? Now, if she didn't believe that uh, Elisha, the man of God, could be a blessing, she wouldn't have come to him. Are you listening to me? The lady was loyal to Elisha and she believed that in times of pain, God will intervene in a situation if she takes that problem to the man of God to, uh, to join her and pray and believe God for a supernatural intervention. Uh, so the scripture says, and there uh, cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. So here comes another observation. You will observe, you will observe that that particular person that passed away had the fear of God. Now, it takes the fear of God for you to do the things that the Lord expects of you. It takes the, the fear of God for you to love God and, and to, to, to make up your mind that you will not uh, get involved in, in things that will displease God. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, somebody that has the fear of God follows the principles of the word of God. So she had to remind the prophet. He said, thou knowest that this, uh, your servant, my husband, uh, feared the Lord. And Elisha acknowledged that fact. But you see, this thing that you notice right here was that the woman believed that in times of her pains, instead of turning her back on God, instead of 
uh, re reducing that act of commitment. Instead of saying, oh Lord, you know, the, my husband had a fear of God. My husband was faithful, was a lawyer. Why should you have allowed this thing to happen to my husband? You know, a lot of people today, when they go through some challenges in life, and when they are broke, when they are battered and bruised, when they are faced with some turbulence, when they are faced with some trials and temptations, when it looks like they are walking on stony ground and rocky soil, when it seems like they are piloting through some, some turbulence, and they are going through the waves of life and the storms of life, they turn their back on God and they begin to accuse God of deceit. They say, oh God, why did you allow this to happen to me? I will not save you anymore. I will not go to church anymore. Some will say, Lord, you know I've been paying my tithes and you allowed this to happen to me. Let me tell you something. Anything that happens to a child of God is for a reason. And God turns all those things around. He can turn your mistakes to miracles. He can turn your problems and bring glory to himself through the situation. Some people begin to curse God. They say, Lord, I'm broke. I, I, I'm about to lose my home. I'm about to lose my job. I lost my job. I lost. I can't pay my rent. Can't pay my, my mortgage. And now they're taking the house. They're taking the house, the house from me. Why should you allow this? I pay my tithe. Now I won't go to church anymore. Just because of a situation in their life that really demand a supernatural and divine intervention. They are not patient enough to allow God work in their lives. But the woman did not operate that way. The woman came. See, you know that your servant, my husband, was faithful, was loyal. You know. Now let's read on. It says, Thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor, is, the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be their, their bondmen, slaves. You wonder why should bad things happen to good people? Verse 2, And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? And I gave her the opportunity to ask. You know, he opened a window of opportunity based on the word of God that says, ask and it shall be given. Knock and the door shall be opened. Seek and ye shall find. So what do you want me to do for you? Do you want me, you know, do you want me to get a police to go and arrest the creditor? Or just tell me what you want me to do. And Elisha went forward to say, what hast thou in the house? There comes the seed. God works with the seed. He says, as long as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest time shall never end. Those people who go against seed, they always wind up losing. Because when you look at the life, and when we talk about seed, it's not only money. You sow seed of love. You sow seed of a smile. You can sow a seed by being faithful. You clean the church. You pay your tithes. You give support. You help those who are in the prison, those who are in the hospitals. You, you, you're faithful. You see, when you faithfully serve in the ministry, you are sowing seeds. It's not only giving. Giving is just a part of it. So when you tell people about seed, the first thing that comes into their mind is money. No. There are many areas of seed. People may not even have money, but they sow seeds in different ways. You can use your, your strength to clean the house, or wash the toilet. That's seed. You can visit somebody that is sick. That's seed. You can give a call to somebody who is lonely. That is a seed. Now, that's, that's sons of the prophet, the servant, that passed away, was loyal and faithful, was always serving in the ministry of Elijah, 
those were seeds that the young man planted did never knew that even you know after his death that those seeds will germinate and bring forth fruits to the to to the wife and the family uh, solving a problem he couldn't solve why when he was alive when he was alive he owed a creditor couldn't pay but he was serving and those were seeds that was going to come back through supernatural intervention. Give the Lord a big hand for that. So Elisha said, tell me what do you have at home? And she said, thy handmaid. Look at what she said. Thy handmaid. She, 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 was, she showed respect here. She recognized the prophet, you know, as a leader. She said, thy handmaid. That means I'm still a servant who is prepared to serve in your ministry. Even though my husband, my, my, my husband that passed away, my late husband, was a servant. You know, that handmaid, she, she showed that respect. Now the question is, do we really respect and honor all those that God has brought along our way and along our paths? In this life's journey, God has given you your pastor, your head pastor, Apostle Larry. How much do you honor him? When you honor him in different areas, you honor him. It comes back in different areas. When you honor him, God will make people to honor you. The handmaid had not, had not anything in the house save a small pot. Pot of oil vegetable oil. Just a small pot. We ran out of rice. We ran out of beans. We ran out of potatoes. We ran out of flowers. We ran out of tomatoes. We ran out of onions. We ran out of pizza. We ran out of spaghetti and meatball. We ran out of everything but just only a pot of oil in the cupboard, in the kitchen. The prophet said, oh, that's okay. You know what I want you to do? I want you to go borrow containers as much as you can borrow. You see, take the step. Go to your neighbors. Empty containers, empty drums, barrels. Bring all of them. Tell your son to join you. Pack as many as possible. Then those two sons that were to be made slaves, you and your two sons should get into the room, lock the door, and... Take that pot of oil, begin to fill the containers. That looks crazy, eh? That looks crazy to the human imagination. Because sometimes when God wants you to do certain things, oh, you know, this is crazy. Maybe this is another, another crazy stuff that I don't believe all the stuff. You know, the woman would have said, how would you tell me to go and carry, borrow containers and just this small uh, pot of oil you want me to fill those containers? You know, but the woman was a woman of faith. She believed the prophet. She believed. She believed the prophet. She followed the principles. They went and they borrowed all the containers. They put them in the, house, in the room. They shut the door. They followed the instruction. You see, the, the ministry of your pastor that you believe in is the one that works for you. The anointing that you trust, that you honor, is the anointing that works for you. If you do not honor the anointing that is upon the life of your pastor, if he prays for you, nothing is going to happen. You must believe God and believe that the ministry of the servant of God that he has given to you is real and is powerful just a statement, go, you are healed. Go, God bless you. Those statements alone can go a long way to bring change in your life. Give the Lord a big hand. Verse 5. So she went from Elisha and shut the door unto her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. She began to pour it. 
the more she was pouring, the more the, the oil was replenishing itself. I was pouring and pouring and pouring. Why? I could imagine how excited the woman was. The woman may have thought, oh, if I had known, I would have gone around the whole city and gathered all the barrel, you know, because she kept pouring and pouring and pouring. And when all the containers that they borrowed got filled, the oil ceased. That's to show you that in life you have to think big. Somebody shout fire. fire. You have to think big. You know, there are a lot of Christians that limit themselves. They limit their certificate to their, to their high school diploma. They limit themselves. Instead of them to stretch for their faith and go to school and get more education and believe God for good jobs and good businesses, they limit themselves. Some, some have this kind of mentality that God cannot do certain things for them. But, if, but when you look at some of the, some people don't believe God. They are unbelievers. They, don't, they are not saved. But they follow the principles of faith. They, they, they are not saved, but they believe God. You see them taking giant steps. You see them establishing companies. They are CEOs. At I've come to tell you today that there are many CEOs in this church in the name of Jesus. There are many, 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 many. Give the Lord a big hand. There are business directors in this place. There are companies that are already shut up on the inside of you that you need to bet. There are industries, there are businesses that God has shut up on the inside of you that you need to give birth to. But you must think big. You must believe God. You must overcome that grasshopper mentality. That mentality that says, oh, I, I can do it. I, I'm not able to do it. I'm too short to do it. I'm too thin to do it. I, I'm not educated enough. I can make it. I can. You know those negative, those grasshopper mentality. God wants his people to overcome all those things. If the woman, if the woman had borrowed astral containers, it would have been filled up. That tells me something. It tells me that God will go with you as far as your faith can go. Write that down. If you stretch your faith, stretch your faith very, very far and wide, God will go with you. If you limit God, God will not impose the breakthrough on you. He wants you to think big and get out you, to that point where you begin to, to expand your businesses. Those of you that have one business or the other, think of how you take steps of faith and expand it. You know, even though you are working nine to, uh, nine to five every day, you can still have extra businesses. You can still uh, create business. Ask God to give you ideas. Areas in which you can make money. So that, so that when, when it's time to be a blessing in the house of God, you will not be afraid. You will not be feeling inferior. If the church needs money or there is somebody to get blessed, you'll be able to write checks without shivering. Without being scared. When, it, when you want to write a check, your heart will not be beating. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> you just pick up your checkbook and you just write. It, when your pastor is getting ready to celebrate the birthday or the first lady getting ready to celebrate the birthday, you can gorgeously and confidently walk up to the man or woman of God and say, look, look, pastor, what do you need for your birthday? I'm going to write you a check of $10,000. How long will it take us in this church to improve the amount on this building project fund? Only one person can write a check and just cover it up and let them get rid of this thing. No need bringing it here every Sunday. 
Only one person can just come. What is the limit? $50,000, $100,000. Just bring two, three businessmen. They just come write a check and say, Pastor, we're tired of seeing this thing right here. Take it away. Come on now. In Nigeria, what, what we normally do is this. When we have big projects, we look at our church. We say, Lord, we're going to take a seed from the church and plant it in the project of other church people because we need supernatural intervention. There was a lady who took, she was saving money to, build, uh, uh, to buy a land for our church and one day God spoke to her. He said, take all what you people have sold, uh, have collected, take it and go and plant it in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the church of another ministry that was building. And God, and they did it. You know, a lot of people were against it, but the, the lady pastor believed, and she did it. Because she wanted supernatural intervention. She believed. She said, well, I don't know how God is going to do it, but in, instead of taking us five years to, uh, to get the money to buy this land, let us sow seed in another ministry that is building, and God will send somebody to come and just buy the land for them. That's faith. So we need CEOs. We need businessmen. We need people who will think big, who will believe God for supernatural intervention. But there's always the principle of sowing. If she had gone around the old city and got out all the empty vessels, God wouldn't have said, oh, why did you think it's too big to go and get all the vessels? You don't know. God would say, well, as far as you are able to go, as far as your faith can carry you, I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to, because God will not let you down. It is time. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. It is time for us to believe God. Did you hear what I just said? To believe God that before the end of 2022, you are going to pay off all your credit cards. You don't believe what I'm saying? God will supernaturally intervene. You may not know how he's going to do it. You know, it's not your business to know how God is going to do it. All you need to do is believe God for divine and uh, uh, that divine and supernatural encounter and divine and supernatural intervention. Hey. The moment the last vessel that they borrowed was filled. The oil stopped. Verse 7, it says, Then she came and told the man of God. You know, she went back and updated the man of God. She, gave, she went back and gave a report. She did not say, oh, you know, my, 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 all the barrels are filled up now. Man of God, I don't need you anymore. I've gotten the barrel. No, 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 no. She came and gave the report. You know, so many times when the man of God prays for you, that's why we say, come give testimonies. The man of God prayed for you concerning a situation. The pastor prayed concerning a situation. God expects you to come and give the testimony. Come and give him update. Come and give him a report. So she came and told the man of God all what happened. So Elisha said, go, sell the oil. Sell the oil and pay thy debts. That means go and, you know, this is another way in which God used the, 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 the prophet Elisha to show her that you can do business. You can do business. Don't you wonder why some of our white brothers in the Western world, they have most of the big corporations? Don't you wonder why? They have businesses. They expand their business. If you have a small store business, all you should be thinking of, how am I going to expand it? And so many of us are afraid to take steps of faith. We are afraid to take loans that will help us expand our businesses. Most, most, most people among the black community around the world, and I noticed that in some part of Africa, when they go and borrow some money, they use it to go and buy the luxurious cars. They go and buy a nice car. 
you cannot take a loan to go and buy something that is not going to produce, that is not going to bring. You know, if you're taking a loan, make sure you're going to invest it and let my money come. You can use it out of the profit to buy whatever house or car that you want. You don't go and take a loan and use it to go and buy, you know, luxurious things that will not produce, that will not bring back. So here the man of God was indirectly teaching this woman to go and sell this product and take care of your bills. Now, I want you to also take care of, uh, uh, write this down. Number one, there's this principle of axing. You notice that this woman followed the principle of axing. You know, she asked. She came to the man of God and asked. She needed support. So she followed the principle of asking. You know, the Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Number two, God works with whatever you are, you are ready to use to see, to sow as a seed. And, you know, silver and gold have I known, but such as I have, I give unto you. The man before he died wasn't very well to do. He had much to give financially, but he gave his time to serve in the ministry of Elisha. And those who have money to give, they give. You know, there are a lot of people today, it's good you give. When you give, you get blessed. But there are other things you can do that you can render to God as offerings. Number one, you, you think of how you can work in the church. You think of how you can do some cleaning, arranging things, taking care of, you know, different areas of the ministry. You, 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 you give your time, you give your energy, you give your strength as much as you also give your finances. And one of the things I want you to understand is that this woman was ready to follow instructions. You know, when you, when you obey God, when you obey God and take the steps of faith, God honors it. You remember in the scriptures when Jesus told the people, he says, go ye into all nations and preach the gospel. In the book of Mark chapter 16 from verse 15 to verse 20, he says, go ye into the world. Now, that was an instruction. Now, when you look at verse 20, the scripture says, and they went. That means they acted. And they went everywhere. Because they went, what happened? The Lord walking with them, confirming. Everybody say, confirming. In Mark chapter 16, in verse 20, it says, and they went everywhere. And they went forth and preached everywhere. And the Lord walking with them, Confirming the word with signs following. So if they had not gone, there wouldn't have been any confirmation. If they had not taken the step of faith, they wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have seen miracles. So God wants us to take steps of faith. The year is still very young. Today is the last Sunday of the third month of this year. So it means that you can still come back to the table, to the drawing board and say, Lord, give me an idea. I want to think big and I want to take steps of faith. And God will surely honor it. Now, let's go to the other example in the New Testament. Because I need to pray for people today. God is going to move. Whatever need you have in your life today, there's supernatural intervention that God is going to give you if you believe God. Acts chapter 12, verse 6. It's another incident in the New Testament where God gave a supernatural intervention. Now, there are many instances in the Bible. When you look at the scripture, you see God intervening. Jesus intervening in the life of blind Bartimaeus. You see Jesus intervene in the life of Lazarus that was, in the, that was dead for, for four days. You know, Jesus, inter, you know, you see divine intervention everywhere you turn to in the Bible. And yet with all this, the people of God still doubt God. Verse 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the door. Now I want you to look at these first few lines. The first two lines. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, that means... Last night, 
the supernatural intervention took place because this morning was when Herod would have brought him forth to go and kill him. So that same night, now it tells you something. It tells you that God is always right on time. Don't give up. Don't just get discouraged. Don't just get to the point where you lose hope. A lot of people easily lose hope. They easily doubt God. They easily doubt. They easily just throw in the towel. When you look at some of your health issues, you just totally just give up. God can come to you in the midnight and just perform surgery in your body. That when you go back to the doctor, the doctor will be amazed. That this is not the work of man. That same night. That same night. That was when God showed up. That same night, Peter was bound with chains. His legs, his hands, everything bound with chains. And he was kept in a prison cell two soldiers were made to guide him that night because they knew that that last night was very critical. They made sure they guide him till the next morning. But what happened? The believers had been praying ever since. They didn't, they were still, at least, at least I love that the way that they were praying. You know, even though they did not believe when they saw the miracle, at least they were praying. It would have been worse if they don't pray. They prayed and let God do the rest. They were praying. Oh God, deliver our pastor. Oh God, intervene. Oh God, intervene. Oh God, intervene. Oh God, intervene. So heaven was troubled so much that God decided he just called one of the angels. He said, I want you to go just Take off from heaven right now. I want you to go to Jerusalem, that particular place where the, my servant is in a prison. He gave him the address, told him the cell number and the particular room. The angel took off from heaven. <laughs> See, God can intervene because of you. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. God can intervene because of your prayers. Took off from heaven. <laughs> Suddenly he appeared. Appeared in the room. He saw the two, he saw the two soldiers. And he saw Peter bound with chains and shackles. And he was sleeping between two two soldiers. But you see, one thing that happened was that as the angel appeared in the room, there was an awesome presence of God in that room that arrested the two soldiers, put them to sleep. The, the medical, they, they call it anesthesia. When they give you that injection that will put you to sleep. Now, let me tell you this revelation. What the, that awesome presence of God did in that room. Two things. Made the soldiers to be knocked out and also brought the glory that could help wake up Peter from the sleep. Wow. Presence of God can destroy the works of the enemy and it can bring life to the believers. Don't forget to write that down. And the angel of the Lord came unto him and the light shined in the, prison, in, in the prison. That's the, the presence of God I'm talking. And he smote Peter by the side. Smote Peter by the side. There's a revelation there. There's always something about the smitten side. The wounded side of Christ. When, and if I take you to Genesis, you see, when God wanted to bring a life out of Adam, he had to put him to sleep and he opened his side. When Jesus was on the cross of Calvary, 
was getting ready to give to die for the sin of the world, he led one of the soldiers to take a spear and pierced his side. And blood and water came out. Now the blood came to do came out to do the cleansing of the sins of the world, and the water represents the Holy Spirit that came to do the feeling of the believers. Filled with the Holy Spirit because water represents the Holy Spirit. And that's when the opportunity for a life to be to come into existence. The, in the wounded side of Christ, when God allowed the side of Jesus to be opened, he knew that that would be an opportunity for the ecclesia, the wife of Christ, the bride of Christ, to come into being. And that was exactly what happened. God just performed a kind of surgery for him. He said, look, Peter, let me strike your side because life will still come out. You're still going to produce many believers. You're not going to die now. You're still going to give birth. You're still going to give birth to so many lives. Smite his side and say, wake up. Get up. But one thing that God did was to make Peter to be in the spirit realm so you have to make him think that he was seeing a vision because if God had allowed Peter to be in the natural or have natural consciousness, maybe Peter out of excitement would have made some noise. Peter may have just screamed like, like Pastor Wanda would scream, hey! <laughs> out of the excitement, hey! Oh, glory! So God allowed Peter to be in the mood of revelation because Peter, you're not going to get excited yet. When you get home, you can get excited all you can. Give the Lord a big hand. So he made Peter to, to remain in that realm of unconsciousness, of vision. And so out of the vision, Peter was enjoying the vision. God told him in the vision, even though he acted physically, but he was in the vision. Because when he struck his side, he told Peter, Peter, put on your sandals. The shame fell off. Quickly, the shame fell off from his hands, from his feet. And the angel said, Peter, follow me. But before you follow me, put on your garment. Guard yourself. Put on your clothes. So Peter was in the vision and he was dressing up. Was dressing up. Put on your sandals. He was still in the vision. Put on the sandals. The two soldiers were asleep. They may have started snoring like they've never done before. Join the sleep, the two soldiers. And the angel said, after putting on the garment, after he put on the garment, they said, follow me. And if Peter was still in the sleep, the angel was in the front. And they walk out of the prison cell. Peter looked back and saw those soldiers still sleeping. He thought he was also sleeping too. So as he walked, they got to the first door, it opened. They passed through it. He thought he was still in the vision. They got to the second ward. Poof, the door popped open. Then they got to the iron gate. Everybody say iron gate. iron gate. The Bible says, and the iron gate opened of its own accord. Every iron gate of difficulties in your life will open in the name of Jesus. Open on its own accord. Angel made sure he got, he got and directed Peter. He walked into the street, very far to the street, to where Peter can recognize how he'll be able to make, him, him, uh, make his way to Mary's house. And the angel disappeared. It was after the angel disappeared that Peter came back to himself. Wow. Supernatural intervention. Now, God hasn't changed. The scriptures cannot be broken. It's only man that is disappointing God. 
God does not let his people down. The problem is that many don't believe anymore. They put, they've put their trust in the natural things. They put their trust in carnal things. They put their trust on their jobs. They put their trust in the government. They put their trust in human beings. And that's why they get disappointed. But if you are trusting God for healing, if you are trusting God for your finances, if you are trusting God for anything, believe God to the end. Like Job will say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I will, I will wait until my change comes. He said, I know that my Redeemer liveth, for he liveth forevermore. Because he believed God. God is looking for people that will believe God. He's about to change your story today. He's about to change everything in your life today. He's about to make everything new in your life. Because God loves you so much. Knock the door this morning. He will not let you down. Divine intervention. No matter the condition, no matter the condition, the sickness, the challenges that you are passing through, your sons, your daughters, your husband, your wife, your parents, your family, your children, grandchildren, no matter what it is, even issues relating to yourself, I want you to believe God that God will never fail you. I want you to rise up on your feet right now. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But Jesus never fails. Listen, as I take it. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth shall pass away. song, very simple, I want every one of us, we're going to sing it, it says Jesus never fails, Jesus never fails, heaven and earth shall pass away but Jesus never fails if you believe it right now I want your faith to come alive as you sing it as you sing it from the bottom of your heart and as you sing it, I want you to focus on the Lord and I want you to think about whatever change, challenges you have and in any area that you need change you need supernatural intervention. Yes, no matter the condition, no matter the mountain, God can move it. Everybody sing, Jesus never fails. Oh, yes, Jesus never fails. Head shall pass away, but Jesus never fails. Come on, lift up your voice and sing it. Jesus never fails. Do you believe that? Jesus never fails. Away, oh Lord, but Jesus never fails. He was there all the time. Come on, let it flow. He was there all the time. Waiting patiently. Patiently, he was there. He was 
was a there all the time. He was there all the time. He was there all the time. Before Abraham was, I am. He was a there all the time. Just wait patiently. With it patiently he lied. It was there all the time. You are next in line for a miracle. Whatever your need, I want everyone to come to the altar right now. You need supernatural intervention in any area of your life. 